Hello, everyone. How was your first virtual day at DAC? I thought, being virtual, it was going to be a little less hectic, but there were so many sessions to check out, and my inbox was exploding with friends and colleagues reaching out. I had a great time catching up and scheduling meetings for the rest of the week. I'm also so happy the program will be on demand until August 1st. There are so many sessions for me to attend over the next two weeks. Today, the research track opens with sessions and panels, plus the designer track, IP track, and embedded systems track have all started. And if you did not attend the designer track poster session at 7.30 this morning, they are on demand now, so go back and take a look. Posters offer a lot of great content. We have a wonderful Sky Talk today and also a Tech Talk on the state of the industry from Wall Street. You can find these sessions under Tech Talk and Sky Talk tabs. Exhibits are open for live discussion from 10.30 to 1.30 p.m. Hopefully, you have marked your agenda and will be visiting the exhibitors during their live hours. The Risk 5 Theater starts today also at 10.30. Make sure to check out the presentations from the Risk Five members. You can find the schedule under the Exhibits tab. Did anyone attend the happy hour sessions yesterday? 5G and I did, and well, as you can see, 5G's not here. He was having too much fun at DAC Trivia yesterday. Today's happy hours include another chance to play DAC Trivia, discuss your strategy for surviving shelter in place with Brian Fuller, and a review of your second day with the general chair. I've marked my agenda for the shelter in place happy hour. Here is Wally, the 57th DAC chair. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to DAC Tuesday. I hope you all enjoyed the program yesterday. From keynote to sky talk to tutorials, design IP and embedded tracks, living, and of course, happy hour. Just in case you may have some uh, IT issue, we appreciate your patience. Starting from today, next few days, uh, we have early poster sessions from design IP and embedded tracks. Those are very popular poster sessions uh, in the past few years at DAC, and please do check it out. In addition, we have a poster session from the DAC Fellow and uh, PhD Forum. You know, they're the future of our generation. I still remember yesterday's keynote, Philip mentioned, hey, one day it would be cool we can bring, you know, like a high school student to design a computer chip like AI Accelerator. So we always encourage you to help and support our next generation, the future of our industry. Starting from today, we're also going to have a, a research track session fully opened, uh, also including the special session and the panels. You're going to hear all the latest and the greatest uh, innovations, you know, algorithms, models, uh, architecture. So while, you know, either you have your first cup of your tea, a coffee during the day or afternoon tea, or could be late night snacks, uh, please do check out all the exciting programs. Some of you may have recognized where I am right now. Uh, yes, today I time traveled back 57 years ago um, to where Dak was born. This is Atlantic City, New Jersey. Over the last 57 years, DAC does not just go through changes, but I think a revolution. Starting from a small workshop with technical program only, over the years, you know, we first added a designer track, then IP track, and now embedded track. We also added a big part of the industry trade show as a program. On the focus area side, that used to be laser focus on the EDA, but now we look at the whole big ecosystem with topics covering design, machine learning and AI, IP, embedded system and software, security, autonomous systems, 5G and cloud. Going forward, I see that has a great momentum for another 50 years. While I briefly talk about uh, DAC history, revolution and momentum. It is my great pleasure to introduce today's keynote speaker, Calista Redman from Risk Five International, who will talk about the Risk of Five Revolution and Momentum. Calista is the CEO of Risk of Five International, 
with a mission to expand and engage risk-class stakeholders, compel industry adoption, increase the visibility and opportunity for risk of five within and beyond risk of five international. Prior to risk of five international, Calista held variety of different roles at IBM, including vice president of IBM Z ecosystem, where she had a strategic relationship across industry. Her background, including building and leading strategic business models uh, within IBM uh, System Group through Open South Initiative. And prior to IBM, Kalista is an entrepreneur in four successful startups in the IT industry. She holds a degree from the University of Michigan and the Northwestern University. Let's welcome Kalista Radman. Welcome to the Risk Five Revolution. We recently asked Risk Five members to share how they're participating in the Risk Five Revolution and how they see Risk Five disrupting the industry. Tell us how your company is engaged in Risk Five. Sci Five is a company that offers calls, uh, IPs, and SOC based upon the Risk Five core. We have contributed to Risk Five our silicon industrial proven P extension. We have embraced the Risk Five architecture because it allows us to uh, address AI at the very edge on battery powered devices. Uh, Syntacore as a company is a Risk Five IP specialist. So we provide state of the art Risk Five compatible IP and uh, also uh, different services based on that IP. Risk Five is driving strategic and game changing moves across the industry. What are you seeing? Where well, we see a big disruption for Risk Five? Well, Machine learning, AI things, that all has a huge potential, especially with the DSI, the Domain Specific Acceleration, where Andes is offering a framework, it will change the market. It's going to take the verification responsibility back all the way to the end user because of all the configuration options that you have, and in addition, because all the freedom you have to put in your custom extension. If vendors of small embedded devices are moving to, to Risk 5 to avoid uh, dangers of of vendor lock-in. RISC-5 is uh, really disrupting the industry today because it can, it can provide a future-proof solution and enables new ways of securing products and enabling new markets. We have a whole new community, the hardware engineering, the mainstream hardware engineering, who now understand open source. It completely changes the business model. It gives us the opportunity to collaborate with many more companies and it increases our addressable market. Hi, I'm Calista Redmond. I'm the CEO of Risk Five International, and I'm so excited to join you here today and share with you a little bit of our story on how we have reinvigorated hardware all the way at the core level through an open ISA. You can reach me on Twitter at Calista underscore Redmond. You can learn more about our organization online, and I hope you'll follow us and engage in our community. Let's step back in time for a second. You know, in the 1980s, everyone was out to participate in the processor war. Numerous different types of custom processors and proprietary architectures were proposed from Intel to Atari. In that time, we were less concerned about energy consumption and the win of the day was, with, was by Intel with constant supplies of energy through a plug in the wall, uh, they really started to take off from desktops to servers. The 1990s saw a stronger reliance on battery power or being disconnected. Uh, so we started to see significant improvements in our opportunities and options from ARM, from tablets to cell phones to laptops. The 2000s and through till today, we've started to see chips implemented in more and more uh, parts of technology and parts of our world, from security cameras to HPC to health devices to cell phones that do more than just make a call. Uh, they can almost make you a cup of coffee. This is continuing to explode from sensors that are computing data in the headlights of cars uh, to the many different areas where we're relying on artificial intelligence and machine learning. At every point of ingest, it is great if you can compute that data right then and there. You don't want that car to run over the cat. The opportunity is boundless. Uh, we see this at cloud level. We see this in data center applications. Automotive is very concerned with not only how can we compute that data and save on storage, but also 
the safety protocols that are most important in moving vehicles. Industrial IoT is incorporating artificial intelligence, mobile and wireless from the apps that connect you with your business to the social and, and other types of apps that keep you connected uh, through the air on uh, networks and through those base stations, uh, not to mention 5G. Uh, consumer and IoT devices are continuing to explode uh, with everything from coffee makers to refrigerators and devices throughout our business world and industry world as well. Memory is also at the forefront of uh, where we see lots of innovation happening and lots of collaboration opportunity. You know, when you really step back and think about it, taking something from an open standard approach or an open source world means you have many different building blocks upon which you can innovate. Rearrange the pieces and parts and you can go into an adjacent space, continue to grow your business. This brings about not only global collaboration for finding innovations and partners to go to market with, but also global opportunity. We're seeing this a lot in Risk V, from embedded in military applications to machine learning and AI uh, and high performance computing. High performance computing is especially taking off here in Europe. The Internet of Things. Smaller and smaller processors are necessary in battery-powered IoT. Uh, we're seeing a lot of uh, continued advance in virtual reality and augmented reality. This helps everything from a shopping online experience to video games. And the wearables market. Nearly everyone has had a chance to wear something to count their steps or to monitor their diabetes. Uh, from healthcare to fitness, uh, wearables are continuing to become very popular. And in wireless, from RF uh, innovations to other innovations that are relying on the, uh, both the compute power at the ingest point of data to where that data gets sent next. It takes a huge community of stakeholders in order to support this mission. This is not just about IP. This is also about manufacturing and fabs. It's all about research and universities who are uh, cultivating our talent and ensuring that around the world we are teaching risk five in universities, as well as once you're in your career, to incorporate training providers as uh, key stakeholders in, in this revolution. We're working with uh, universities to incorporate curriculum. We're working with uh, training providers to include risk five as they continue to progress the state of the art for our engineers. Across industries, we see industries from automotive to military, from HPC to healthcare, uh, and, and across a huge variety of industries that are bringing uh, risk five into the forefront. This is a great area for entrepreneurs and the VC community is well aware of it. Uh, we are working uh, closely with many VCs around the world as they look at risk five as the next innovation that is, is uh, revolutionizing where we are in the semiconductor space. We also have relationships with analysts who are uh, forecasting and reflecting on the progress of RISC-V and, and other uh, technologies and where RISC-V is in its maturity and life cycle, as compared with many other ISAs. We are working with software across open source uh, Linux implementations to tools and other providers to help design and develop the next RISC-V processors. You know, the functional innovation at, at, at a technical level is super important to risk v We have many different work groups who are engaged uh, deeply in their domains of expertise, from acceleration to memory and storage and microcontrollers that can help uh, both with GPUs or other memory configurations, uh, around security and creating those zones of trust and uh, trusted execution environments. We are working hard to uh, partner with Google on Open Titan and uh, also with other uh, corporate interests from Western Digital uh, and others around the world. We're working with many of our members on design support, ensuring that we have tools and resources that are uh, the same as what you would use with any other ISA 
and having that support on risk five as well. So with so many stakeholders and so many partners and in innovation opportunities, there also comes global opportunity as when it comes to markets. You can take a wearable that you're using in fitness and start applying it to healthcare. You can take sensors and other compute that is happening with data in moving vehicles and apply them to, supply, to other uh, parts of industry. You can uh, start to expand your opportunity beyond your geographical borders. A solution that works in one corner of the world may work very well or be a proven approach in another part of the world. In fact, global adoption is happening very rapidly. This chart goes from basically zero to 62.4 billion. You know, that is incredible growth between 2019 and 2025. Semico is, has predicted that the fastest growth area of this will be in, 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 in the industrial sector with 16.7 billion cores. We see this continuing to advance. We're excited to work with the analyst community and continuously updating, you know, where is production? Where, we've, where are the predictions matching the production and the outcome? Let's take a little walk around the world. You know, in APAC, APAC is about a third of our membership today, and we're seeing incredible progress across China. Uh, today, we have more than 200 members of our earliest associations there, uh, CRVA and CRVIC, and those 200 members are joining us and uh, developing with partners locally as well as globally. In Taiwan, Andes Technology is really our top leader there uh, and has hosted many different forums and is engaging both locally and globally. I was very excited to report that uh, this year we are up to four different organizations in China, one in Taiwan, another one in Japan, uh, several uh, initiatives that are ongoing in India and Pakistan. We are continuing to see tremendous opportunity and tremendous uh, participation. That participation, I will note, is two-directional. It is one thing to consume a technology when it's become open source or become an open standard, and it is profoundly more valuable when you contribute back. So contributing back may be as simple as having your engineers participate in our work groups, participate in the thought leadership that goes into our strategy and including your particular points of view facing the challenges of your customers, the opportunities of your markets, infusing that into the direction we're going. Working shoulder to shoulder with your peers also inspires confidence and, and builds on skill sets that you couldn't begin to capture through one at a time courses. So we're very excited about the progress that we're making together with our China members and across uh, the APAC region, especially in Taiwan and Japan, as well as South Korea. In Europe, HPC has been a cornerstone of our growth there. Uh, leadership from the Barcelona Supercomputing Center as well as ETH Zurich have really inspired the next generation of HPC technology along with the European uh, Commission's uh, validation of risk five for acceleration that we saw in the EPI initiative more, more recently. We're very involved. Here's a picture from our workshop in Zurich last year, uh, which is, by the way, our global home. Uh, our workshop in Zurich inspired many folks. We had a packed house and, uh, uh, well, unfortunately, we, we weren't able to return this year in person, but we can't wait to get back. Uh, but we are working together with Taos as well as many others across Europe uh, to further the European agenda for uh, local innovation. And I will also note uh, that we are seeing a lot of uh, VC and, uh, and entrepreneurial startup activity across Europe as well. In fact, this, there has never been a time better than now for startups to engage in the semiconductor space. Remember back in the 80s and the early in the 90s, it took millions of dollars to get involved in this space. And now we're seeing folks come out of graduate school and start new companies 
with a focus on risk five, an investment in risk five, because we've lowered those barriers to entry. The barriers to entry on a technology side by having a very uh, modular approach to the ISA, something that you can uh, pick and choose the extensions that will be perfect for your implementation and not have the burden of additional extensions that aren't necessary and consume other valuable space and energy in your SOC design. From a business perspective, those barriers are gone. Uh, you no longer have the royalties and uh, limited supply chain or lock into particular vendors or uh, architecture um, dependent on particular companies. That's something that Risk Five is doing to revolutionize this industry on both a technical as well as a business perspective. Let's think about the HPC leadership in in uh, in Europe. The accelerator stream is uh, fully underway. As you can see, the uh, the first generation is is due to come out in 2021, and you see an ongoing roadmap uh, into the into the next uh, decade. And this is something that we're very excited to be involved in. Uh, we've got leadership in our own HPC community coming from Barcelona Supercomputing uh, Center, and we're very proud to be relaunching uh, the HPC Special Interest Group with concentrated focus on deliverables, opportunities, and engagement across the HPC community. Barcelona Supercomputing Center recently uh, launched Legarto, a uh, processor they've built together with TSMC. This has been a great step forward as the first open source ISA, ISA chip developed in Spain and uh, coordinated and led by our colleagues there. So congratulations on that. We also saw uh, DRISC uh, putting together the European space platform. So we're definitely ready for risk five to uh, go beyond our own frontiers. India has been taking a leadership position in risk five for many years. In 2014, the funding uh, was made available for six risk five processors under the Shakti project. Uh, this has been led by IIT Madras and risk five has been uh, widely declared a national architecture there. Uh, we see deep uh, interest across the universities in professional training and in uh, launches of Shakti processors around India. So congratulations. In Japan, our momentum seems to be doubling each year. Uh, we had a significant showing at our 2019 Tokyo Day last fall and uh, held uh, graciously by Hitachi, uh, Sony Semiconductors, uh, uh, along with Hitachi, and many other participants from universities to corporations are deeply engaged. And we're having tremendous conversations with the automotive industry in Japan. Uh, we understand the concerns around safety and security and have uh, special interest groups around both safety and security. Uh, these are extremely active parts of our community. In North America, you know, I mentioned that APAC had about a third of our membership and North America has about a third of our, of our members and Europe has the other third. We are a very globally diverse uh, organization and we're very proud of the work that we're doing together. In North America, uh, we've had the strongest leadership from Western Digital and Google uh, with Sci-5, with Microchip, NXP and NVIDIA. And we've had a, a great deal of software support over the last couple of years from Red Hat. We are building out this ecosystem to be world-class, to encompass everything from embedded to enterprise. There are no bounds to where RISC-V is headed next. You know, I should mention Pakistan. Pakistan had more than 3,000 people. And by the way, this is by far the most beautiful event I've seen. Uh, more than 3,000 people across two events as they declared Risk V their national architecture. Pakistan is a place of great importance to us. They are a training center for global training, not just for Pakistan. So they are reaching beyond their borders to infuse Risk V knowledge, expertise, and talent for a global uh, revolution. 
So welcome to Res Risk 5. I hope that you'll consider joining our organization. So what is it that we do as Risk 5 International at the center of all of this? We do want to be the center of gravity for all things Risk 5 while appreciating and understanding the many different opportunities geographically uh, to continue to pursue our aspirations. So we are supportive uh, globally and act globally. This is a snapshot of just uh, many of our members uh, as we have them today. And today we are at more than 580 members. Uh, this is around 50, across 50 countries around the world. As you can see from this chart, we have a great diversity in the talent that is coming in, the perspectives, the stakeholders, and the strategies coming together. That blue line in the background, if you can squint a little and see it on your screen, you'll see we haven't hit a plateau yet. We are continuing to grow. Uh, we are continuing to bring folks on board. This dates back to our inception back in the third quarter of 2015. We're excited about our five-year birthday this year. And honestly, I've never seen an open hardware initiative growing as fast as Risk V. We have advocates and ambassadors around the world across all industries in many of the different technical domains that are important for long-term success. We are building this revolution not just for today's custom processors, but for the future of computing. RISC-V is something that we are absolutely determined to lean on for the next several decades of, of SOC designs. So let's talk about the programs that RISC-V delivers. Across our organization, we have six different programs. This is really where those membership dollars go. We are pursuing technical deliverables. It is our goal and our responsibility to guard against fragmentation and forking. We manage and progress our technical work groups to uh, provide open and freely available uh, technical deliverables ranging from software to ISAs uh, and ensuring that we make those freely available at a global level. We also are the administration engine behind the scenes of each of those technical work groups, and there are about 30 of them today. In compliance and verification, we launched our first uh, compliance kit last December and uh, are working on uh, tests to go along with that. Visibility. Visibility is super important to me. This is not just about how we are representing Risk Five as an organization, but it's at least the same level of support that we give to amplifying the success across our community. Success that members are having in their domains, in their per progress as organizations, as they embark on new adjacent spaces to, uh, to take advantage of opportunity. Visibility includes everything from our relationships with press and analysts, to the events that we host, to our engagement in other industry events, and making sure that we have strategic visibility at all levels of organizations, both within those who are already deeply familiar and engaged with Risk Five, to those for whom this is their first time. Learning and talent. This is about half working with our universities to infuse Risk Five curriculum, and about half working with our training uh, providers to ensure that they have the latest information and can deliver Risk Five training at a professional level. We're also cultivating our own set of online training to offer directly. Advocacy and outreach. This is not marketing. This is actually engineers talking to engineers, helping solve challenges, field questions, give talks, go deeper on engineering topics of interest. We have nearly 30 uh, meetup groups around the world today, composed of more than 3,000 different uh, participants. So we are looking at that for both geographic as well as domain-specific gatherings, and we're establishing alliances with other organizations, such as the organizations that you see in China, in Europe, in Japan, in South Korea, and, and elsewhere, where Risk Five alliances and associations are also coming together. In the advocacy and outreach area, we're proud to announce this year that we've also launched a uh, ambassador program. 
you'll find it on our website and you'll get to meet seven of our uh, our latest crop of uh, ambassadors. These are folks who are deep on risk five and excited to engage with their communities. Marketplace. This is not where we make an extra buck or find a royalty stream from any of the hard work of our members, but rather one point of visibility where we can quickly uh, help interested uh, stakeholders, interested end users to go find various options, whether they're looking for core IP or a developer board or uh, education or software, we want to ensure that they have a, a way to help find those RISC-V options. And then we route the traffic accordingly. So let's go one level deeper. So I mentioned that we have more than 25 different uh, technical work groups. It's about 30 today. And here's how they lay out. We structure these in uh, kind of committees and group standing committees that help to oversee and coordinate between our different work groups. We have special interest groups that are uh, focused on functional safety, high performance computing, soft CPU. We have uh, many different groups who have graduated, have released their uh, specification or have sunset and morphed into something else. And we have all of this driven by one technical steering committee. Uh, we've taken a very democratic approach with our technical steering committee and that you may earn a seat on that. Uh, and no company may have more than one vote on the TSC. Software support is hugely important to us. We support both open source uh, tool chains and, and uh, repositories, OSs, 32-bit, 64-bit. Uh, we also work very well with commercial software. Tools and resources that are common across our industry are very important to support RISC-V as well. Our compliance framework was uh, uh, issued in December. We're very excited to now have testing uh, coming available soon, in fact, this year, against that compliance framework. Invisibility. We're continuing our momentum as much as we can in live events, whether those are online or in person. Uh, we are putting together webinars, blogs, and other social resources to help amplify the success of our community. We are having a uh, editorial calendar where you can learn the latest and greatest on Risk Five and submit to blog posts. Continue to gain visibility for all of our stakeholders from. Uh, students to luminaries. We are capturing that spirit. And we are in the process of revamping our marketplace. I mentioned that earlier as a one-stop shop to find all things risk five. There are so many risk five things that we need to overhaul this area so that we can scale as we grow. And we're doing that now. And it will soon encompass not only where can you go buy something, shuffle you there immediately. We get no cut in any of it, have no vested interest in any one particular solution, but to also route that traffic to developer forums, places where engineers can go to learn, hey, who else is using this? What has your experience been? Where is some sample code that I can try? So our community and marketplace of open hardware is continuing to grow. We have many alliances that we have in place today. We have many cores and SOCs that are available on our website that you can see today and uh, learn more about from each of the folks that are providing those. And we have additional, uh, you know, we, we will point you readily to additional open and proprietary solutions in our website. I mentioned learning and talent as well as advocacy and, and outreach. I do hope that you will join us. Uh, we have a great ambassador program today that, I, that has seven members of it. We have uh, 3,600 members in our meetup communities today. Uh, we have great events coming up. We will have two major events this year. The first is our global online forum. It's coming up soon, September 3rd. And then later in the year, our December Risk 5 Summit, our biggest event of the year. Both of these have call for papers open, sponsorship opportunities open, as well as registration to attend. We are also engaged in many different industry events. If you want to learn from some of the other experts in our community, uh, we have all of these listed up on our website. We are also continuing to work and are relaunching our uh, university and uh, academic academia outreach group. 
Uh, so you will find a growing repository online of our educational resources, as well as uh, continue to foster the success of uh, curriculum adoption around the world. In fact, I'm so excited that uh, we have uh, many of our many of the books that have traditionally been used in learning Risk Five are now have, have now been translated into other languages. Membership is uh, comes in three flavors. We have a top level membership called Premier, uh, kind of top dollar. Uh, also. Uh, brings with it very deep strategic interest and a strategic opportunity to help drive the organization uh, as a member of the board of directors at, or and uh, the, a member of the technical steering committee. Our basic level membership for companies is called Strategic, and we tier pricing on that uh, based on how many employees are in the in the company. Gives you all the rights and and uh, privileges of membership. Our community member benefits, uh, this is a free level. This is a very normal and open source world uh, where we are offering free membership to universities, nonprofits, and individuals. I hope you'll join us if you have not already. So please uh, reach out to me. Uh, again, my name is Callista. and you can find me very easily online. This slide will tell you about my Twitter handles, our website, LinkedIn, and WeChat. Uh, so please uh, join the revolution. We're excited to uh, grow together with you. So thank you so much. And that will wrap up my presentation for today. And I look forward to your questions. And please uh, share with me your thoughts, your ideas, your inspirations, your challenges, and your triumphs. Thank you so much. So I hope you'll join the revolution. I hope you'll sign up for Risk 5, learn more, and join us in, in this new frontier. Thank you.